All right, so hey guys, and welcome to the end of the year Q&A for 2018. My goodness, another year is behind us. It's crazy, I've been making Warframe videos for nearly four years now, and I've been doing YouTube full time for almost three. That's crazy. But anyway, let's start with the Q&A. So question number one, I'm planning to start making Warframe videos like you, not a full time job. Is it okay for me to take you as my influence for my videos? Of course you can, it's absolutely fine, go right ahead. You know, this is actually kind of crazy to me that someone would take me as an influence. That's something that I never would have imagined when I started doing this. So it would be my pleasure to be your influence, my good sir. Question number two. This one gets asked a lot, all the time, by the way, as well. If you could create a Warframe with your own concept, what would it be? And um, I always say the same thing. I would like to have a proper sort of minion monster slash summoner type Warframe. Kind of like Korra, but with more pets. And I know this will most likely never happen because the pet AI in Warframe isn't amazing, let's be honest here. And there are Warframes that kind of do it, but none of them do it in the way I would like. You know, with Necros you have the shadows, but nah, they're not quite pets. They're sort of just this meat shield that doesn't do an awful lot. So, as I've said, the closest thing to what I want is Korra, which is why I like her, because I can have Venari and then another companion on top of that. Question number three. This is actually multiple questions in one. So what do you do for a living? Is YouTube your full-time job? If it is your full-time job, what did you intend to do before YouTube? So I do YouTube for a living and I have been for almost three years. It's actually going to be three years in March, I do believe. But before that, I intended to be a chef. I went to culinary school, I finished culinary school and I actually worked as a chef for a little bit. And I still love cooking to this day, but... The problem is, once you finish school, unless you hit a really good job, you're gonna end up working in sort of like mediocre restaurants where you're cooking very bland food and you can't really do anything on your own. You're basically just following what the owner wants you to do. And that's not fun. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to cook good food and I couldn't really do that most of the time. Because for every dish I enjoyed putting together and I would love to eat myself, I had to cook like 40, 50 dishes that I would not touch with a 10 foot pole. So I kind of gave up on that and I started working in warehouses, which was a lot more fun because I got myself a driver's license for multiple different types of forklifts. So I got to drive around in forklifts, which is fun. And I was actually pretty decent at it as well. Working in a warehouse also pays a lot better because you're generally doing morning and noon shifts or nine to five and you work Monday to Friday rather than doing either 12 hour shifts on a short, long week where you would work Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday on one week and then Wednesday, Thursday on another week, 12 hour shifts all the way. Or what I also did in a pizza place actually, I would have week on week off. So I would do a 12 hour shift on Monday and Tuesday, then I would do a 15 hour shift on Wednesday, 12 hour shift on Thursday, 15 hour shift on Friday and Saturday, and then a 10 hour shift on Sunday. Though this one usually stretched out far longer into 15, sometimes 18 hours, because we kind of had to put everything together and prepare the pizza place for the next shift, which would come the next week, and I would have a week off. That was, on one hand, pretty okay, because, you know, every other week I would be free to do whatever I wanted for an entire week. But on the other, it was pretty terrible as well at times, especially when it was a busy week and there was like a hockey game going on in the town. Then you would have like 10 people that would each order 10, 15 pizzas and I was the only person in the kitchen. So I'd be just trying to make all these pizzas in a reasonable amount of time. And I remember coming home on Sunday, sometimes at like 4, 5, even 6 a.m., and I would be incredibly tired, but my arms, my legs, my back would hurt so much. I couldn't sleep for the entirety of Monday. And then I would just fall asleep and I would wake up on Wednesday, right? I would sleep through the entire day because I was just done. Question number four. What do you think of a Stalker Prime? A high-level Stalker that strikes the fear that the current Stalker once did. That would then drop parts for Dread Prime. And I really don't think this would work because no matter how scary you make him, He's eventually not going to be scary and we know that for a fact because it happened with the shadow stalker right stalker wasn't scary anymore so they added shadow stalker who was scary in the beginning but nowadays you just blow him up and that's it so yeah unless they make them really overpowered i don't think this is going to work question number five what do you think about the fortuna update and what do you want for the next open world if we get one and while I think that the Fortuna update is really good and I still enjoy it to this very day, it introduced some really cool stuff like fluff hunting. The orb fights are okay, I think. I don't think they're amazing, but I think they're okay. K-driving is really fun and the open world is absolutely fantastic. 
I don't think it works for Warframe in the way they're doing it right now, where you have a void of nothing, then a massive explosion of content at the end of the year, nothing, massive explosion of content at the end of the year. And I think the smaller updates, even though they don't bring out as much content, but come far more frequently, work a lot better for keeping people interested in the game, or at least it's that way for me. And I'm not saying that they didn't do a lot of stuff in 2018, you know, they started off with the weapon rebalancing, which was fantastic, they added ESO, they added arbitrations, we had the relay reconstruction, even though that one felt a little bit rushed out. I'm also not saying that I don't want them to do these big updates, because I do, but I think the content could have been spaced a little bit better, because we had this void of, you know, kind of meh stuff before Fortuna, then this massive content explosion with Fortuna, and then another massive content explosion with Fortuna Part 2 and Mesa Prime on top of that. You know, this could have covered far more time if it was spaced out a little bit better. And as far as the next open world I would like to see is concerned, well, I would like to see an infested one. I really want to see what they do with the infested landscape, and it's also the one that makes the most sense, because they already did a Grenier one with the Plains of Eidolon, and now a Corpus one with Orb Valleys. Question number six. It seems that you don't play with many other people slash in a squad. Are you more of a solo player in general? And yes, so lately I have been playing mostly solo. And it's because, number one, I'm very picky when it comes to recording, so I don't like having random people doing random things and typing random things in videos. Number two, I really don't like bothering people with my recording, especially when I'm trying to do something specific, so I'm playing slowly or I'm doing weird stuff, so I really don't like annoying people with that. And number three, as our warframes and weapons get gradually stronger with a little bit of power creep here and there, Squad play just, for me at least, becomes duller and duller, and that's especially the case with bosses, so the Eidolons or even the Orb. Because, as an example, soloing an Eidolon is a lot of fun, and I love doing it, because you can play around with different weapons, you can try different frames, try different tactics and that kind of stuff. But as soon as you go in there with a squad, it's just poof, 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 Eidolon dead. Because people had already figured out the most effective way of taking down the Eidolon, so they can essentially one-shot it. And that's not fun, because you're not fighting the boss, you're just waiting for it to die. Question number seven. Will you ever do a face reveal? I already did, multiple times. Question number eight. Are you guys still recruiting for the Gentlemans? The Gentlemans, by the way, is my clan. It's a mountain clan, and it's almost always full. But I think we do have few free spots right now, so just go into the forums, go into the clan section, and look up the Gentlemans. Question number nine. Are we going to tell the E to make the orb fights easy enough to do it without meta? The people do not want the Profit Taker to be like the Tridown Hunts, since the latter is infested with meta lovers and tryhards. And that will just straight up not work, because all that will do is just make the people that do use the meta setup kill it faster. Even if you make it killable with MK1 Bratton, people will still use the meta setup because it's more effective. It might not necessarily be the most fun way to do it, but you'd be surprised at how many people don't give a damn about that. Question number 10. What is your favorite memory from Warframe? And for this one, we'll have to go way back, like five years back, okay? Because it's when I first sort of broke into the game and started understanding the game mechanics and realized that I can kind of do whatever I want and the game isn't going to stop me from doing dumb stuff. It was when I first built Rhino, right? I finally got Rhino and this is way before like the parkour rework and the melee rework and all that kind of stuff. We're talking, you know, 2013-ish when the game was a lot slower. So before I got Rhino, I was just using Excalibur with some crappy mods and I had to use guns and be careful because the enemies were doing a lot of damage. But once I got Rhino, I had Iron Skin and I realized that I can just equip him with a big sodding hammer and smash things in the face with it, if that is what I want to do. So I did it, it was a ton of fun, I just fell in love with the game, and here we are, five years later. It's also why I'm so fond of melee, and why I do weird off-meta builds for melee weapons that are just supposed to be fun, and why I started the whole Warframe Stancy series, where I showcase all the stances and combos in the game. It's because melee weapons are what made me fall in love with this game, even before they were reworked into what we have now. Who do you think will survive longer, Inaros or Nidus? I'm gonna go with Inaros, especially if you have Arcane Grace. Question number 12. Which frame or weapon would you like to see become primed? Hmm, I honestly don't know, because all the weapons that I wanted to get primed have been primed already. Question number 13. What is your favorite type of music and how long have you been playing the guitar? Well, I've been playing the guitar for 18 years since I was 10, which also answers the question how old I am. I'm 28 at the moment. And my favorite type of music is metal in general, and when it comes to subgenres, I lean more towards like power metal with glory hammers, Stradivarius, Hammerfall, Rhapsody of Fire and that kind of stuff. Symphonic Metal with Nightwish and Epica, 
and tech metal, but more classical style of tech metal, so less archspire, more first fragment. With first fragment being one of my favorite bands of all time, and I really hope I don't get striked for this, but just have a listen, okay? This is just a very short snippet from their song called Gula, which I'm not going to play more of because I might get copyright strike, but you can listen to the track on your own. Which I would highly recommend if you are into this kind of metal, because as I said already, the song is absolutely fantastic. And what I like about First Fragment the most is that they are not technical just for the sake of being technical. They have some classical elements, which I enjoy very much. And a lot of their songs have a nice groove, or at least a groovy section in them, which is just awesome and something that you don't generally hear with tech bands. Question number 14. Coffee or tea? Well, why not both? I drink coffee in the morning, and then as the day goes on, I switch over to tea. Question number 15. Do you eat... Yucca? Yucca? What is that? I don't know what that is. I need to look it up, which also answers your question. Probably not. Yep, I don't think I have ever seen that in my life. So, yeah, no. Question number 16. What is your favorite potato dish? I'm gonna have to go with Bramborovi salad, which is potato salad. I love potato salad. It is magnificent. Especially when you make it and then you let it... Especially when you make it and then you... Especially once you make it... Especially if you don't eat it right away, you just let it sit in the fridge for about two days. Oh, mwah, magnifique. Question number 17. Will you be doing more videos like the Orb Mother Kill where you just play the game and you have some live commentary over it? Well, yes, because while the video was much longer, it was like 25 minutes versus my normal 3 to 5, it was much easier to make, but I don't think Warframe lends itself to that kind of content very well. For a person like me, that is. I think it works if you're new and you're just going through the game for the first time, but for someone like me that has progressed to the end of the game and I've done everything there is to do, I don't think there are too many things I would want to make a video like that about. And I think that if you are like me and you've gone all the way to the end and you want to provide content like that, I think it's better if you just stream. And the final question, question number 18, is what is it like to do YouTube full time? And I think the best word to describe doing YouTube full time is stressful. It's fun, but stressful. And depending on what kind of person you are, it can be exhausting as well. Not physically exhausting, but mentally exhausting. If I take myself as an example, you know, I put YouTube or you guys front and center. Okay, I will always do everything I need to do for you before I start doing things for myself. And as good as that might make me look because oh, I sacrifice, it's not a good thing. Okay, that's not a healthy thing to do. And if you do that for too long and just keep pushing it farther and farther and farther, you will end up being miserable, which is a trap that I've fallen into a few times in the last three years. And I started slowly slipping into it again very recently with Fortuna, Fortuna Part 2 and Mesa, which is why I now took two weekends off, you know, last week and this week. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you ever hear someone downplay mental exhaustion, whether it is towards you or someone else, or you even are one of those people that do it, you know, say things like, oh, you're mentally exhausted, how terrible it must be. You have no idea what you're talking about, and you've probably never been properly mentally exhausted, because I've been physically exhausted many a time. I talked about this earlier, I did seven shifts in a row, 12 and 15 hours, and I was exhausted. And I would take that over mental exhaustion any day of the week. Being completely mentally drained is the worst thing in the world. And it's because when you're physically exhausted, you know you're physically exhausted, right? Oh, I'm tired, my legs hurt, my arms hurt, oh my. Mental exhaustion doesn't work that way. It actually starts off rather tame and it sort of creeps up on you. You know, you start off being somewhat irritable and you can't focus. And the more you push it, the worse it gets. You, know, you start to feel physically tired, you start to get depressed. To a point where it can make you feel completely worthless. But it is not just like, bam, oh, I'm mentally drained, oh my. No, it slowly gets worse and worse and worse until you hopefully finally realize what's going on and put an end to it. Or you don't and you push it to the extreme and then you just explode. You know those videos of people that go absolutely batshit over the smallest things and you're like, why are they doing that? That's the end point of this. That's when you push it too far and that one thing that seems so inconsequential to everyone else is the straw that broke the camel's back. Because when you push it this far, you know, you get irritable, you can't focus, you are depressed, you are tired, and you feel worthless. Everything is multiplied a thousand times. Though it is still much better if you do that, because that kind of releases that energy and most likely will make you realize what's going on, than if you just jump off a roof or a bridge, which people have done as well. 
And I'm slowly starting to learn how to avoid it properly, you know, by taking just some me time, you know, doing stuff for myself, doing things I want to do, just having fun for a little bit and not working all the damn time. I still need to work on it though, because I'm really bad at like not doing anything and not working. So what often happens is I will decide to take a day off and then the day comes and I feel bad because I feel like I'm wasting time and I'm not doing anything, so I work anyway. But you know, that's the downside of this job, it's something you have to deal with and I would not give it up for anything in the world because I love it, even though it's sometimes making me go a little bit mad. But anyway, that's enough rambling for today, so I thank you very much for listening this time around, I hope you have enjoyed the Q&A, I wish you a happy new year or whatever floats your boat, and I will see you in 2019. Bye bye.